coming to a comfortable cross-legged seat this morning. Up on the edge of something. Notice the time perhaps that it takes your, your thighs to relax. And if you can, place yourself on mute. It'll be quiet for a moment. And if not, we can, once we start moving, I can do it. So if it, the device is far away, don't stress about it. Rosa, can you still see us? I fear we have lost her. Yes, I can. Okay, fantastic. All right. Take your shoulders up by your ears. Give them a good squeeze. And relax it down. Open your eyes and your mouth really wide. And then close down. I realized I haven't been asking if anyone has any injuries or conditions. So please, please do let me know when we talk in the morning, when we check in, if there's, if there's anything that's really uncomfortable or hurting in your body right now. Let your hands find your thighs, palms down, comforting, feeling, closed this connection. Or maybe you are ready to release and receive, palms up. Let the eyelids gently close. Draw a breath in through your nostrils. Open your mouth and sigh. Draw this breath in through your nostrils. Be patient. Feel the fullness. Exhale. Sigh. Notice how it takes time for all the breath to leave. Inhaling fully and deeply this way. And one last time together, sigh through the open lips. Inviting you to arrive right here and now. I'm working through Pema Chodron's book, Living Beautifully with Uncertainty and Change. I read some of it yesterday in Yin and Restorative Yoga. And two of the, two of the phrases that I've been really aware of and thinking about throughout my week um, are this. We are part of a dynamic system in which everything and everyone is in process. I found that really helpful in, in dealing with the people that I deal with throughout the day in person and online. I find that really helpful in dealing with Felicia, who is so in process right now. Maybe that is comforting to you to know that everything, everything and everyone is in process. In process of changing, in process of breathing, in process of living, in process of moving through this, whatever their personal experience is, and into the next moment. And then this little nugget, when we resist change, it is called suffering. Hmm. So much easier to think about suffering as something that they do to me or that is happening because of a great big this. But one of the really sweet things that our yoga practice can teach us is that a lot of our suffering comes from our clenching into wanting things to be a certain way or in fear of what comes next. So I hope that this practice today invites you to connect with this process of evolving and change that we are constantly in flux and allows you to notice that if you cling to one shape and clench there, it is impossible to release, transition, and move to the next. Let's inhale together. On this exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Lift your heart and bow your head. Palms can be touching. Palms can be resting one on top of the other on your chest. Let your thighs soften down. Let your spine grow long even as your neck, your chin, your head bows down to your heart. Chanting, humming, listening to the sound of Om. Everything is your choice, my friends. Let's breathe in together. Ah. 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 
Release the back of your hands to your thighs. Lift your face so it shines forward. Blink your eyes open and begin to cultivate your ujjayi breath. Maybe you start out ujjayi breath really loud and strong and then gently dial it down. Maybe you start that gentle constriction in the base of the throat very slowly and build up. Allow this to be your accelerator pedal throughout class. Have it at the right amount of rev and the right amount of idle. But have your engine, your breath, as something at least in the back of your awareness today. Throughout the flux, throughout the process, throughout the change, it can be useful for there to be a present awareness. And maybe ujjayi breath invites that into you today. Eyes are open now. Inhale, float the arms out and up alongside the ears. Circle the wrists one way and then the other. Reach through one side and then the other. Lift the chest up really high. Heel violet. Feel how that changes the breath. Soften the shoulders down. Soften the ribs and give the low back space to breathe. Inhaling here. As you exhale, take your left hand down beside you, but wait. And now bring it behind you like a kickstand. So maybe the fingertips on the ground. And notice how that draws the shoulder back, but then press down through that finger. Reach up through the left arm, right up alongside the left ear. And notice what's happening in your ribs and in your legs and in your face. So sit down on your bottom, draw that left thumb back, but the left shoulder down, press into that right hand behind you and still relax that right shoulder down. We are capable of so many things at the same time. Lean over to your left. Find that left hand grounding down, find that right arm extending and still find an evenness across the shoulders, maybe an evenness across the hips so that the leaning happens just at the side body. Inhaling here, maybe look up underneath that right arm, or maybe look down to that right knee, relaxing it with your eyes. Inhaling here. Exhaling here. Inhale up to center, reach up, look up, make some shoulder circles with your arms alongside your ears. Go forward, go backward, relax your jaw, your chin down, let your shoulders do it instead of your neck. Yeah, let's bring my arms out to the goddess arms, elbows bent, do a little wiggle side to side, elbows up and down, and now reach up. And now it's the right hand behind you. Find the ground behind you so you can press into that arm. Feel that arm be strong and engaged and still relax the right shoulder down. Reach the left thumb back to the wall behind you and see if you can even out your ribs, your collarbones towards the top edge of your mat. Probably not perfectly equal. Nothing is because it's all in process. Will your toes relax there. Inhale like this. Exhale, lean over to your right. Feel how things want to collapse or expand. See if you can find evenness across the front of your hips, your waistband, across your collarbones. Let the movement be at your side body, at your ribs. Nice. You can look down at your ankles over to that left knee or beyond the left arm. Can you both reach down and back and forward and up and still relax the shoulders down? One more inhale like this. One more exhale like this. Inhale up to center, reach up, look up, touch your palms, bring your hands to your heart. Lean back and change that cross of your legs, moving into the way that you don't like or don't choose or don't often experience. This one may be awkward. Allow it to be in process. Inhale, extend your arms out to a T, thumbs up, and give yourself a hug with the right arm on top. Lift the elbows, draw the shoulders down, twist to your right. Keep this hug here, even out your waistband, even out right sitting bone, left sitting bone, back of the neck long. Open up your arms and twist to your right. Maybe that left hand gently presses that right thigh down really gently. And maybe that right arm behind you finds that same grounding down and relaxing the shoulder. As you lift the heart, relax the ribs and twist to your right. Keep the gaze back and down behind you. Notice the space between the teeth. Add it in there if it isn't. Breathing in through your nose and out through your nose as you twist. Breathing in, relax the thighs. Exhale, twist maybe a little bit deeper. Inhale, spin forward, hands to the shins or thighs or knees up, back and down with the shoulders. Reach the arms out to a T, find goddess arms. Reach the elbows away, let the fingertips relax. Reach the elbows away, let the shoulders relax. Reach the elbows away, feel the underside, inner side of the arms, and let the back of the hands move gently back behind you. The ribs long to flare open, but they can also soften in waiting till another time, another shape. 
back of the neck long, inhaling here. And give yourself a hug with the left arm on top. Squeeze, oh, so many people we want to hug. <sighs> give yourself that hug, inhale. Exhale, twist to your left. Relax that right hip down, wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, find a hug here and an opening across the thighs and yet not too much. So the breath flows open up, complete your twist. So the left hand is behind you, find that grounding and yet still relax that uh, left shoulder down. Right, easy to press the left hand behind you and firm up everything across the left top chest body. See that you can ground down. Right hand on left thigh, gently pressing down, twist at the ribs, look down and back behind you. Evenness across the waistband, back of the neck long and elegant. Ribs softening in, maybe draw the navel slightly in so it's the chest, the collarbones that lift, not the ribs, and twist just a little more. Inhale, spin back to center, come up off of what you're sitting upon. Move props out of your way, making your way up to your hands and your knees. Fingers spread wide, still feeling like you can grip the ground, right? When they're spread too much, there's no energy to grip. So finding the right amount of expansion and the right amount of contraction possible. Instead of tucking the toes, let the tops of the feet come to the ground. Notice if the belly is hanging and instead reach through the tailbone, reach through the heart and gently gather those ribs in again once. Again. Inhale, lift the hips, relax the belly, roll the shoulders back, lift the face, cow shape pose. Exhale, tuck your tailbone, round your back, then chin towards your chest, cat shape pose. Press into the toes, lift the hips, drop the belly, armpits spin forward and up as you gaze up. Exhale, feel the hip bones narrow as you round the back, drop the head, really empty out the breath. Inhale through the nose, expand through the hips as the hips lift up and the face shines forward and up. And then exhale, bring it all in. Let the head and the neck relax as it just dangles. One more time each way, inhaling to arch in your cow shape pose, breathing all the way to the tips of your lungs. And exhale, rounding, being so patient with letting go of that breath. Back to neutral, big toes to touch a breath or two in child's pose. Forehead to the ground, arms beside you or behind you or a pillow for your head with your hands. Child's pose, so under-practiced. Notice how this feels in this moment and maybe promise yourself to practice later today in the middle of your day, this sweet, sweet hug. Imagining this hug on you as the hug on someone you want to send, send to, someone you want to hug when we can, breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your nose, feeling this process of coming in, even as the back body expands. And draw yourself back up to your hands and your knees. Tuck your toes, bow your head, lift your hips up and back. Now we're facing dog. Oh. Take your dog for a walk. Hmm. Let your walk be slow or fast. Maybe imagining you can feel the ribbons of muscles and tendons and ligaments waking up to this option to move. And then come to stillness, a little softness in the knees as the heels reach back, head dangling as you look down beneath your belly button or to your toes or your knees. Press into your palms, feel like you can grab the mat a bit and find that element of drawing the shoulders back. Before it was drawing the shoulders down in the twist, draw the shoulders back. Maybe feel a stretch along the side body or somewhere else. Inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your nose. Release the knees to the ground. Step the right foot up beside the right thumb. Lean forward and down into your lunge. You're always welcome to have any part of your hands on the floor, to have blocks here. I love seeing you reach for things. Back foot, the back left foot on the ground. Always pat up underneath that left knee if it says no thank you. Don't tell it to wait. Draw the right hip down. Sink the left thigh forward. I think about padding up or cushioning under the knee is that flight suggestion that you put on your mask first before others. I think so often we think, oh, it's no big deal. We'll be moving soon. It really is. Pain is a big deal. So we can avoid the suffering. We can avoid fighting change by perhaps padding up when necessary, taking a break when kind, child's pose, anything that feeds and fills your tank. Make sure your right knee is directly over your right ankle. Press your left hand underneath your left shoulder down into the ground on a block or on the floor. Press the left 
Toes tuck them under, press the left heel back and take a twist to your right. Draw the right thigh into center, the left thigh into center. Press back with the left heel a lot as you press into that big toe mound of the right foot. Spin your left ribs down and then reach up through the right hands. Now those are the left ribs. Spin the left ribs down, float the right ribs up. Maybe look up to your thumb. Inhale like this. Keep the thigh bones moving towards one another. Relax the right hip down. Bring your right hand to the ground. Release your left knee to the ground. Move your front knee beside your back knee. Tuck your toes, bow your head, lift your hips up and back. Travel forward to high plank pose. One exhale to release knees, chest and chin down to your mat. Slither into baby cobra. Toes reach away, shoulders draw back. Feel the hip points press down as the knees lift up. Exhale to bow your head, tuck your toes, navel to spine, hips back, and then hips up, downward facing dog. One breath in through the nose and out through your nose. Knees release to the ground, left foot up by left thumb. Right thigh sinking forward and down, listening to the knee, avoiding the suffering that we may, drawing the thigh bones in together, drawing the upper arm bones in together so that the hips can be more level with the floor beneath you and the mat edge at the top. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Put weight into the ball of that left foot, weight into the top of that right knee and chin as you sink that right hip forward and down. Anything that makes sense with the hands, fingertips could be pointing forward, the hands could be in fists. See if you can spin your inner elbows forward though. So instead of your elbows out to the side, draw them forward and open. Nice. Find the floor underneath your right armpit, hand presses down. Tuck your right toes, press your right heel back. Put weight into the front part of that left foot. You got it, spin up to the sky. So the left hip wants to spin up too, right? Wrap it in. Find that big toe mound of the left foot. Wrap that left hip down. Press the right inner heel back. And scoop the navel in towards the spine. Right rib spin down. Left rib spin up. Squeeze the shoulder blades in towards the spine and find how much is too much, right? Too much in the breath changes. You hear that there. So much is right. So too much is no good. So finding the effort, finding the feeling, inhale here, exhale, left hand down, right knee to the ground, left knee beside it, toes tuck, head bows, draw the hips up and back, downward facing dog, inhale forward to your high plank pose, exhale, knees, chest, chin, feel the heart reach forward as the elbows reach back, slither into baby cobra, hips press down, knees lift up. Exhale to bow your head, tuck your toes, draw your hips up and back, finding your downward facing dog. Inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your nose. See if you can spin your inner elbows to the top of the mat and still press into the space between your thumb and your first finger. The softness in the knees allow you to find more stretch in the hips and the low back. Hmm, feel the space where the top of the shoulders are and get broad across the top of the shoulders even as the shoulders draw back. Make space for your neck to breathe, nice. Inhale here, exhale here. Soften your knees, walk your way to the top of the mat and when you arrive, dangle like a rag doll. Feet hips with distance apart. Depending on your space, like my space, you may practice differently top edge of the mat and back edge of the mat. So find the place where you feel safe to move side to side and up and down. Maybe hold on to the back of your head for a moment, imagining making space in those upper neck vertebra. Inhaling here and exhaling here. Very nice. Let go of what you're holding on to. Soften your knees. Feel heavy in the feet. Feel the front of the thighs activate and roll up to stand. Climbing into your mountain pose, Tadasana. Toes forward, sides of the feet parallel with the sides of the mat. Inner elbow creases spin forward, inviting openness across the chest, but then turn the palms to face the legs, reach down through the arms. Feel that reaching down, that activation of like lengthening the arm bones and still the openness across the chest. 
Close your eyes and imagine the bottoms of your feet. Imagine to be seeing a pressure point map and seeing that you can see the pads of the toes pressing down, the bottom of the knuckles of the feet pressing down, the outer edge, the inner edge, right? Arch is there, so maybe not all of it, but feel that place where it gets close. Find three spots in your heel to press down and find how this bringing attention to standing, this breathing and standing is unlike what we do during the rest of the day. Allowing this experience to be in process as we dive into this wonderful, wonderful practice of being you and me and breathing and flowing. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up, eyes open, lift the gaze, exhale, hands through the midline, fold in half, fold forward, bend. Inhale, halfway up, shins or thighs or touch, expand through the arms, even as you press into the legs. Exhale to bend the knees, plant the palms, step back into your high plank pose. Let's stay in high plank pose a little longer than we want to. That's one of the really good things about yoga is that we do some things we don't want to. Sometimes we don't do things because we don't want to, because we feel something about them. So feel the work it is to press the heels back and reach the heart forward. You know that you can practice knees, chest, chin. You can practice Chaturanga Dandasana with the knees up or the knees down. Let's inhale together here. Exhale lower. You choose eight points prayer or low push-up. Hips come forward, chest lift, find your baby cobra or up dog, press into the hands, expand the collarbones, gaze to the horizon, exhale, bow the head, tuck the toes, draw the hips up and back, downward facing dog, breathe in, and breathe out. Finding a rhythm of the breath, finding an inhale and an exhale that is a little more towards idling than revving knowing that both are necessary throughout your practice and your drive today. Soften the gaze, inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend the knees, look past the thumbs. Inhale, walk or hop to the top of the mat. Lengthen the legs when you arrive. Reach the heart forward. Imagine the ribs moving away from the hips, then fold in half. Pull forward, bend, reach the fingertips down. Inhale, press into the feet, reach the arms out to the side, up to the sky, reach up, look up, exhale, hands at heart center and arms by your side. Move with your breath. Inhale, press the feet down, reach the arms out and up, spin the outer arms forward, fold forward and down, fold forward, bend, tuck your chin and let the back of the neck be so long. Inhale, forward and halfway up, you've got it, open the collarbones wide as you bend the knees, Plant the palms, step or hop back and lower down. Feel the chest open and the shoulders back. Inhale, heart forward and up. Press evenly through the tops of the feet in your baby cobra or up dog. Bow the head first, tuck the toes, draw the hips up, and then back downward facing dog. Find the gentle inversion that we speak about in downward facing dog. If it's going to be a gentle inversion, then it can't be the revving of the engine. So find the right amount of distance between the hands and the feet. Maybe you walk them closer so it is quote unquote not revving and a little easier. Maybe you soften the knees and let something else on the outer thighs or the inner thighs lengthen. Spin your inner thighs back to the wall behind you to lift your sitting bones up higher and let the gaze rest beneath you. One more inhale like this. One more exhale like this. Inhale, rise to the balls of your feet. Bend your knees, look past your thumbs, walk or hop to the top, plant your feet, lean forward on arrival. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms out to the side, up to the sky, stand up, reach up, look up. Exhale, hands to heart center and arms by your side. Surya Namaskara B, bend the knees, sink the hips, sweep the arms alongside the ears, Utkatasana, shoulder blades down, heart forward. Thighs and arms parallel, shoulders and hip points level. Sit back into the tiny chair that isn't there. The toes can lift, but press into the ball of the big toe. Inhaling here, exhale, straighten, gather the thumbs, fold in half, fold forward, bend. Inhale, halfway up, heart forward. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, step or hop back and lower down. Squeeze the elbows in as you reach the heart forward and up. Exhale to bow the head and lift the hips downward facing dog. Extend the right leg up on your inhale, bring the knee forward, put the right foot down beside the right thumb. Back heel comes down to the ground, press into the feet, feel the thighs active, reach up. Warrior one. 
Upper arm bones move in towards the midline, shoulders soften down. If the shoulders are feeling really tight today, you could have the arms out to goddess arms and reach the elbows away and relax the shoulders down. So find action in the arms at the same time you find the shoulders softening down. Press into that outer edge of the back left foot so that left knee and left ankle stay in a line. And maybe draw the right hip back and the left hip forward, not the knee. Let the knee stay, pointing back towards that toe. Inhale here. Exhale, bring the hands together. Open up to the long left side of your mat, warrior two. Arms out to a T. Take a peek back at your back arm. Be it as, let it be as high as your front arm. Have your front heel bisect your back inner arch or heel to heel. Find that imprint of your feet on the floor like you could almost rip the mat and gaze forward. Inhale, reaching through the middle finger. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Inhale, reach out to warrior two. Again, reach through the pinky fingers. What does that do? Exhale, hands together back at your heart. Inhale, reach the arms away. Reach through the pointer finger here. Exhale, hands back to your heart. Inhaling here. Exhaling here. Wiggle your right foot back in space so it's coming closer to your left foot, but still have your right toes pointing forward and press very evenly down into that left foot. We're going to practice kind of stepping up and back into a triangle, not in triangle pose, into a tree pose. So press into the right foot, activate that right thigh, kick back and bring that foot towards your ankle. Now press into the left foot, press into the right foot, kick back, bring that foot to your standing leg. Maybe one more time, bring it back in and up. Maybe you hover before reaching down to bring that foot up to the inner thigh. Hands stay together at your heart, hands stay to your hips. One of the great things about practicing at home is you can have a chair or a wall nearby for days when inversions feel especially wonky. You can bring the arms up alongside your ears if you're not up in an attic room and you have the head space. You can reach the arms out to goddess arms or out to a T if the space isn't there. Finding the right foot pressing in and the left foot, left thigh pressing in there. Have the right toes point down and the right outer thigh spin back. Reach through the arms and yet soften the shoulders down. Inhaling here, beautiful tree poses. Exhale here. Press into that left foot. Turn and look towards the top of your mat. Lift the right leg up. Step out really long, warrior two. Arms out to a T. And then straighten that front leg. Sink the hips back. Reach the right arm forward, forward, forward. Bring the right ribs down. And finally, right hand to the ground. The ankle or a block. Left arm up to the sky. If you're able to peek at the screen, so often we see people's left ear up by the left shoulder. Can you imagine the spine as this wonderful long curvy line? So the tailbone reaching back, the spine in the middle of the body, and then the crown of the head extending that. So see if you can be gentle on the neck, even as you look where it makes sense to look. Find that imprint of the feet on the ground. Feel the thighs active, front of the thighs holding you up. Maybe you even take that right hand off the shin or the block and kind of float, spinning the left ribs back and the right ribs down. Utita trikonasana. Inhale, back up, warrior two. Exhale, bend the knee. Inhale like this. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down. Frame the front foot. Step back and move through your flow. Lowering down as you exhale. Lifting up as you inhale and also honoring the fact that the vinyasa might be too much rev at this point. So moving towards that active, steady hum of ujjayi breath. Inhale the left leg up, knee forward, left foot beside left thumb, back heel spins down, really strong in the legs as you reach up and look up. Draw the collarbones even with the top edge of the mat, soften the shoulders down, thigh bones, upper arm bones in towards the midline, and also acknowledging that elbows out to the side, goddess arms might be what is best for you to breathe with your shoulders as they are today. Soften, it's so easy to lift these front ribs up. Imagine instead you lift the hip points up, soften the ribs down. Inhaling here as you reach through the middle finger, exhaling, soften the shoulders down. See, when you're on mute, you can even make snide remarks about comments like that. Inhaling here, smile. Exhale, hands to the heart. Open up to warrior two to the long left side of your mat now. Bring your hands to your hips and see if you can kind of even out your waistband. 
So I'm not sure what happens in your body exactly. When I even out my waistband, my left knee wants to come in. And that's okay. Even out your waistband and then use the muscles in that left leg to draw that left knee over the left ankle, making sure you can see your big toe. How's the footprint on that back right foot? Is it all on the ground? Is it all in the front part, the middle part? Can you find all of that foot on the ground as you relax that right hip down? Reaching through the middle fingers as you gaze forward. Exhale your hands back to heart center. And he'll reach through the pinky fingers. Feel the back of the arms activate. Exhale the hands back in front of your heart. Reach through the pointer fingers, the space in between your thumb and your first finger. As you soften the shoulders down, bring your hands back to heart center. Inhaling long neck. Exhale, start to wiggle that left foot back in towards that right foot. You know where we're going now, so make it a three-point experiment. Kick off the right foot, come back towards that left leg. Press into that right foot, kick off the left, bring it back towards the calf or the um the thigh, really find strength in the right leg and the left leg, and then when you're ready, maybe you hover, maybe you take the hand down, maybe you touch the floor, hand still in front of your heart or to your hips if that helps even out the waistband, foot to the calf or the inner thigh, finding your true pose. Collarbones wide. Find that footprint of the right foot on the ground. Find a lifting in the arch, and now find the footprint of the left foot on the right leg. Let that left outer thigh spin back and down as the left knee points beside you. Kind of that same action from warrior two, but draw the hips level with the top edge of the mat. So feeling a stretch across the inner left thigh or hip. Inhaling here, exhaling here. Your choice, trees grow tall, trees come out to goddess arms, trees stay with hands at heart center. Barikshasana. Notice if the front ribs are popping open and draw them in, inhale here. Exhale, gaze forward. Press into that right foot, lift the left knee up, and then step out as wide as is available to you, warrior two. Inhale here, feel the feet on the ground, straighten the front leg, sass the hips back, and think about this long curvy line of spinal energy. So hips move back, so the left ribs come down. If you keep the right ear up by the right shoulder, it stops that dropping. Trust these legs to hold you. Left hand finds something to press into, not your knee, and right arm floats to the sky. Keep sassing the hips back. Find that footprint on the ground. Arches active, legs lifting here. Spin the left ribs down, the right ribs up. Gaze to your back toes. Invite them to be long and engaged or up to that top right hand. Can you sass the hips back even more here? Where do you feel that? In the inner thighs, the outer hips? There's nothing wrong to feel that work. You feel the energy of a little more than you want. Inhaling here. Hmm. Exhaling here, maybe you lift that left arm up, maybe you take the fingers off the leg or the block. Let the right fingertips lead the way. Inhale back up, straight arm, straight legs, rebend the front knee, gaze forward. Inhale here, ujjayi breath. As you exhale, cartwheel the hands down, step back and lower knees, chest, chin or chaturanga dandasana. Shine the heart forward, spin the inner armpits forward. Exhale, bow the head and lift the hips, downward facing dog. Breathing in and breathing out. <sighs> Lifting the hips. Feeling the length in the side body. Feeling the place in your hips where the bones of your pelvis are snuggled in. Let that reach up further away from your ribs. So softening the ribs and reaching the shoulders back. Inhale here. Exhale here. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend the knees, look past the thumbs. Inhale to walk or hop to the top of your mat. Lengthen your legs when you arrive. Open your chest, lean forward, long spine, fold in half, pull forward, bend. Stay here, wiggle the feet, hips width distance apart. Find yoga toe lock. So you could have the fingers underneath the toes, might bend your knees a lot. Pads of the thumbs touching pads of the fingers. Check in with where your inner elbows are. So inner elbows not facing one another. That draws the shoulders into the neck. Inner elbows moving forward. So you kind of snug your shoulder blades up the back, in this case, up towards the ceiling. Lengthen your arms. Put some weight in your toes. Lean forward. Make some space. And then exhale. Bend the elbows out to the side and fold. Inhale, press into the toes, crown of the head grows further to the ground. Exhale, lift the hips, bow the head, downward facing dog. 
Find that cycle of energy, inhaling, leaning forward, shoulders back, exhale, closer to your thighs, Pade Bhushtasana. One more time, inhale, leaning forward, exhale, elbows in towards the shins, fold close to you. Inhale, halfway up, exhale, release the toes, soften your knees, roll all the way up to stand. Coming to prepare for Utkatasana, toes pressing down, heart reaching up, inhaling here in process, exhaling here. Inhale to bend the knees, sink the hips, reach the arms alongside the ears, Utkatasana. Exhale, straighten and fold, full forward bend. Extend halfway up, fingertips on something. Exhale, bend the knees, hands to the ground, step or hop back and lower. Inhale, hips forward, chest forward, gaze forward. Bow your head and lift your hips, downward facing dog. Inhale, the right leg up behind you, right foot in between the thumb, setting up for warrior two. Back heel spins down, left arm leads the way. As you come up and open to the long left side of your mat, palms face the ground, reach through the inner space between the thumb and the first finger. Bend deeply into the front knee, ground in that outer left heel. Left hand to left thigh, right palm to the sky, reach forward, up and back, radiant warrior. Reach through both fingertips, right and left, and now draw the shoulders away. Bend into your front knee, relax your hips level. Exhale, right forearm to right thigh, left arm up alongside the left ear. Spin the ribs to the left, ground into the feet. Use the action of that right arm on the right thigh to spin the ribs forward and still draw that right hip back. There's a quality of triangle pose here. Do you feel it? Right hip back. Right armpit and right ribs reaching forward and spinning up. If you breathe more easily with that right hand on the ground inside the foot on a block or on the floor, please go there. Spread out the feet. Hug the thigh muscles to the thigh bones. Spin open one more breath. Exhale like this. On cartwheel back up to warrior two. Gaze forward as you inhale. On this exhale, cartwheel the hands down. Frame the front foot. Optional vinyasa, lowering down as you exhale, floating up and forward as you inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg up, left knee forward, left foot beside the left thumb, spin the right heel down. Remember, you're coming up into warrior two on this side, so reverse cartwheel up. Feel the feet on the ground. That process, that change, that flux means that we probably feel it in a different place every time. And that can be disconcerting. We want the ground to always be right where it is. It's where it is now. The muscles are capable of what they're capable of right now. So right now, shoulders down away from ears, reach through the inner arms. Good. Right hand to back thigh, left palm to the sky, scoop forward and up, radiant warrior. Beautiful. Left knee reaching towards the second and third toe. Knees not hurting because they're lined up over the ankles. When the knees twinge, consider finding more purchase with the ground and less pushing in the hips. Find that tilting back with the left ribs lifting up and the right ribs cinching in. Inhale here. Exhale, float forward into your Uttita Parshva Konasana. Feel that left arm on the left thigh. I'm not a fan of left elbow and left thigh. I'm sensitive, so I have my forearm on my thigh. But maybe the elbow works for you. What allows you to press down with the left and then spin the ribs open? Reaching through the right fingertips, but drawing the right shoulder back. Are the ribs bloating? Could you lift the hip points up and soften the ribs in? Option to put that left hand on the ground or a block inside the left foot, always available. And now find that action of sassiness from triangle, left hip back, left armpit forward. Feel how that left thigh might talk to you more as you're sinking that thigh bone down and then spin to look back to your right toes or up beyond that right arm. Find that outer edge of the right foot pressing down as you reach through the right fingertips. One more inhale like this. One more exhale like this. Right arm leads the way, float back up, warrior two, gaze forward, inhaling together here. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down, frame the front foot, step back and move through your flow. There's a quality of 
the standing poses being a peak of coming up to a mountain, the engine revving a lot of gas. Can you find a softness in the back of the neck as you breathe here in your downward facing dog? Still working, still feeling, still being, but easing back. Allowing the engine of your heart and your lungs and your breath to do what it does best for as long as it can, they will be faithful to you being alive. Inhale up to the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend the knees, look past the thumbs. Inhale to step or hop to the top. Lean forward when you get there, long spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale to bend the knees, sink the hips, reach the arms alongside the ears, Utkatasana. Stay here, exhale, hands to heart center. Hook the left elbow either outside the right knee or put the left elbow right on that left thigh. Sink the hips back and down. Take a twist here in your Utkatasana. Even out the weight between the right foot and the left foot. Keep the head in line with the base of the cervical spine, so not lifting that right ear too up, not dropping that left ear too much. It's good to think about the ears and the neck, because then maybe you don't pay attention to how much work it is to sink the hips and lift the heart. Inhale here. Exhale, unwind. Keep the knees bent, fingertips to the floor. Step the left leg back behind you. Put the left knee on the ground. Wiggle the right foot over to the left side of your mat. You're coming into that shoelace gomukasana shape. So the right knee is touching the left knee. You're going to spin the heels apart so that left heel moves over to the right. And then sit down in between your heels, maybe onto a block, maybe onto a blanket, maybe onto a sofa cushion, whatever is there. If gomukasana legs doesn't work in your body, you could have your shins stacked. You can have crisscross applesauce. The great thing about practicing at home is you can take all sorts of pillows and put them underneath this hip or put the socks behind that knee. So is there a way to find a version of this shape that has the crisscross because that does this cool deepening and, and gripping and mm, constriction in the groins that can be useful? And if that doesn't work, of course the other shapes make sense. So the right leg is on top, lift the left arm up, pat yourself on the back. This might be where you would want to put a strap of some sort over that shoulder. Pat yourself on the back, reach the right arm out, tuck the thumb down, bring the arm behind you. So you're holding on to the strap or the pillow behind you or the towel behind you, or you're just having the palm of the left hand on your shoulder or below, or maybe the back of the right hand on the low back. So find the elbows reaching in opposite directions and even out your waistband, even out your collarbones, even out the top of your shoulders. Draw your upper arm bones closer into the midline of the body. Tuck the chin in and fold. Go Mukhasana, cow facing pose. Some people find flexing the feet feels useful in relaxing into the shape. Some people find wiggling that bottom heel more towards the top of the mat to be useful in relaxing the thighs. It's a double hip opener, it's a shoulder opener, so it's challenging. And it changes with every breath. Inhale the elbows away, exhale the elbows in and fold. Inhale ujjayi breath with the teeth apart. Exhale, imagine the shoulder blades going down the back as you exhale. Inhale here, lean the chest forward and down. Exhale, release your arms forward. You can have your palms, your fingertips on the ground. You can have the back of the hands on the ground. Wiggle the jaw side to side. Inhale, ujjayi breath. And exhale, ujjayi breath. Walk your fingertips back in towards your legs. Press down to lift up. Move any blankets or socks or pillows out of the way and separate your knees apart, a double tree pose and Baddha Konasana. Cobbler's pose, soles of the feet coming together. You could again bring pillows or socks underneath the outer hips to allow the thigh muscles to relax. If the thigh muscles, if the hips are feeling really tight today and everything feels tight and in, there's no opening or maybe there's a really challenging opening. Maybe they're suffering against the change opening. So finding the right amount of support back at your hips and your thigh bones. Lift your heart up. You can hold on to your feet. You can hold on to your shins. Let your inner elbows spin forward, whatever you choose, and fold. Sometimes that fold is just a tilt. Sometimes that fold is all the way to the ground. 
most of us are somewhere in between. Breathing in through your nose, and breathing out through your nose. Feeling your arms, your hands connected to something. Shoulders can soften now. With your hands, your arms, your shoulders connected to something, can you lean forward with the space in between your collarbones? Lean forward here and fold just a little more. Inhale, make your way back up. Take the shoulders up by the ears, relax them down. Use the hands to lift the legs up and extend the legs long. Circle the ankles, point and flex the feet. Move your heels to one side, climb yourself up into your downward facing dog. Inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your nose. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet, bend the knees, look past the thumbs. Walk or hop to the top of the mat, sink the hips, reach the arms alongside the ears. Utkatasana. Hands at heart center, your choice. Right elbow to left thigh or hooking it outside. Sit back and down into your tiny chair. Feel the heart lifting up towards the thumbs. See what the distance is between the earlobes and the top of the shoulders. And that can be changed in a couple ways, lifting and dropping the head, scrunching the shoulders in or moving them away. Find the footprint of the feet on the ground. Let the knees be even with one another. Lift the heart to the thumbs one more. Inhale here. Exhale, hands to the ground. Step the right leg back behind you. Place the right knee on the ground. Walk the left foot over to the right. Hug that left knee up behind the right knee and come to sit in Gomukhasana on this side. It might be useful to take the hands under the thighs and move them closer. It might be useful to rock side to side and give the glutes, the muscles along the, the bottom, a chance to spread out and sink down. Right, The muscles bunch up to move the bones. So maybe you wiggle side to side and find more evenness there. The left leg is on top, so the right arm comes up. Pat yourself on the back. Again, maybe a strap is useful here. Reach up and still draw that right shoulder down. So you can take your right hand to the top of your right shoulder as you reach up, and don't strangle your hand. Find that right amount of lifting that the body supports. Left arm out to a side, thumb down. Bring the hands behind you. Pat yourself on your back. Maybe fingers meet. Maybe you hold on to wrists. Something interesting Karina said this year in teacher training, so often if we make that bind, we then leave it right away. So keep drawing the palms closer together if you find the bind. Either way, elbows up, bring the arm bones in line closer to the spine, and notice what's happening in your seat. Even out your weight, sitting down. Flex the feet if the knees love that. Lift the heart. As you exhale, tuck the chin in and fold forward. Go mukasana. I didn't say it specifically on this side, but of course, crisscross applesauce or shin bones lined up with one another is also a wonderful double hip opener. So you choose the flavor. Inhale, reach the elbows away from center. Exhale, spin the left ribs down as you fold. See if you can keep the spine in line with the tailbone. Trust the grounding of the glutes, of the legs sinking down. Stretching the connective tissue that connects the upper body and the lower body. Inhale, extend that right elbow forward. Exhale, soften the left shoulder down as you fold. Keep the arms like this. If you love this stretch, or bring the hands down to the ground in front of you. You decide. Palms, fingertips to the ground, or backs of the hands to the sky. You are always, of course, welcome to have props there to meet the hands, the head, anything you like here in this shape. Inhaling like this. Exhale, sigh. Inhale here. Exhale, sigh. Walk the fingertips back. Use the muscles in the arms to reach the low back behind you, then the ribs, then the shoulders, then the head lifts up. Hands beside you or behind you. Put your feet on the ground and windshield wiper the legs side to side, releasing the groins. And then move into a kind of straddle split type seat. 
You can have something underneath the sitting bones. You can have the legs close in or far apart, feeling the space that was just constricting in getting a chance to open up. So press through the balls of the big feet. Don't have the legs at 100% of your split. At most, it's 80%. Have your knees and your toes pointing up to the sky. You might rock side to side and kind of move the muscle, the flesh underneath the sitting bones out to the side, a little more evenness here. Inhale, lift the heart. Let the ribs stay softening in. Let the hip points keep lifting up and fold forward, finding Upavishta Konasana. Let the feet stay active. The knees can be extended or they can be slightly bent. Relax the chin down to the chest and the shoulders back away from the ears. You might find yourself walking yourself forward. If you have long arms and love this shape, you're welcome to take the big toe lock of Padangusasana here or hold the inner and outer edges of the feet, but keep drawing the shoulder blades down. Keep inviting the hip points forward and the ribs to soften in. How is your ujjayi breath here? What, what amount of RPMs are you at now? Reaching through the heels, knees reaching up to the sky. It's almost like the sitting bones kick out behind you. One more inhale here. One more exhale here. Draw the hands back in, press them down to lift up, lean all the way back, bring the thighs in and give yourself a hug. Your knees can touch or be apart. It's your hug. You decide. One shoulder up and then the other or both together. <sighs> Come down onto your back, moving into a back bend. So you might want your blocks nearby for a supported back bend. Feet on the ground, toes pointing forward. Arms on the ground, palms on the ground. Reach through the fingertips and then draw the outer shoulders and arms down to the ground. So keeping that connection. Notice if there's a big arch in between the shoulder blades, maybe you need to move the shoulder blades out to the side the same way you might have just done with the, with the glutes and the sitting bones. Heels as close in as the knees agree is good. Heels in line with the sitting bones, toes pointing forward. Press your low back down. Press your low waist, your back waistband down to the ground. And then hands and feet pressing down. Roll from the bottom to the top, coming up into Setu Bandhasana. Keep the knees in line with the hips, so inner thighs, inner thighs spin down. Press into the palms and the shoulders, spin the chest up towards the chin. Notice any gripping in the bottom and invite it to relax, tailbone reaching towards the back of the knees. You can tuck the outer shoulders underneath. You can interlace the fingers, reach the knuckles for the heels if you like. Reach through the fingertips, whatever pose you choose, and still press the outer shoulders, the outer arms down. Chest coming up to kiss the chin as you inhale. Exhale, hands and shoulders out of the way, roll down from the top to the bottom. It's a kind of tuck up in the hips as you eventually lay the bottom down. Maybe you keep the feet on the floor and move the knees side to side. Maybe you like stillness with the hands on the belly. Noticing what happens across the chest when you find the ground. Seeing if there can be that openness in the chest by the contact with the ground through your next bridge pose. Or you could choose Urdhva Dahanyarasana. Upward bow pose would be bringing the hands beside the ears, fingertips pointing into the shoulders, elbows over the wrists. So you decide, hands here, shoulders still start, start down, or hands by your side, shoulders start down. Press into the feet, engage the hips, lift up from the bottom to the top. Mm. Setu Bandhasana, bridge pose, is supposed to be so good for all the rounding that we do in sitting. And it's probably not a stretch to say that we're all sitting a bit more than we used to. So reach the shins forward, feel the thigh bones lift up, feel the muscles, the connective tissue, acknowledge this different new shape and understand that discomfort or confusion is not a punishment, is not a bad grade. It is instead something new and possibly changing to open up. One more inhale like this. Feel the ground underneath your hands and your feet. As you exhale, lower down with control, tucking the chin to come down onto your shoulders instead of the top of your head from upward bow. And then move the knees side to side when you come to the ground. Draw the knees in. Give yourself a hug and rock side to side. 
Let both knees drip over to your left, reach your right arm out long, turn and look to the sky or to the left knees, only to the right hand if you love it. Reach through the right fingertips and find that outer arm, outer shoulder, reaching and relaxing down. Whether it touches the ground is not important. Feel that left, top right hip reach towards the top edge of your mat. Hug the knees up and in, or extend the top or even both legs long if you like, kind of making a letter L in the twist. Hmm. Draw your knees in, roll onto your back, give yourself a hug. Make some circles on the sacrum. And then the knees drop over to the right. Left arm reaches long. Knees up to the ceiling or to those right knees. Reach through that left palm and arm and then relax the outer left shoulder down. Hugging the knees in, hip height even closer, reaching the legs long into kind of an L-shaped twist if the low back loves that. Hmm. Inhale here. Exhale here. If the legs have stretched out, bend the knees, lift the left arm up, come over onto your right side, press down to lift up. And coming up to sit. So I'd like you to consider practicing an inversion today. We're not in the yoga studio. There's a lot of stuff around. So if you love forearm stand or head stand, if you have blankets for shoulder stand and you want to go there, then go there. Take a moment. Move stuff away. Explore that. You also have the option to come into a supported shoulder stand, which is I know it's one of Michael's favorites every time. So if you have a block, that's great for supported shoulder stand. You can also make that happen, though, with a couch cushion or with a blanket. So maybe you have a firm folded blanket. Maybe you have a block. Maybe you come down onto your back, lift your hips up, and put that folded blanket right underneath the low back so it feels supported. Arms long by your side. If the block is there, really feel connected to the block. The hips heavy, so the shoulders almost feel lighter. And then when you're ready, reach the legs up to the ceiling. You can play with pointing and flexing the feet. You can play with eagle legs if you love up here. It's not my favorite in the supported, but if you love it, go for it. I'm going to come down so I can look and see what you all are practicing as much as I can. Nice. If you've taken an active inversion, feel the legs long and reach there. Feel the contact of the hands on the ground. If you've chosen this active shoulder stand, feel like the elbows squeeze in as you reach through the feet. Nice, Rosa. Great choices, Margaret. Inhaling here. Exhaling here. Imagine in active full shoulder stand that the, the forearms come even towards one another. The heels of the hands almost sink down towards the shoulders as you reach through. One more inhale here. Nice, Patricia. One more exhale here. If you're on the blocks or blankets, stay there. If you're in an active inversion without blocks or blankets, start to soften the knees and come down. If you've taken full Salamba Sarvangasana, full shoulder stand, maybe you took a breath and plow, maybe you're all the way down. If there are blocks or blankets underneath you, start to bend the knees, bring the feet to the ground. You've got it, Liz. Kick up through the, well, press into the feet, lift the hips up and move them out of the way. Returning down after your inversion, coming down to lay down onto your back. And drawing the knees in, giving yourself a hug. Rock side to side, up and down. And then have a little fun coming back up to sit. You can rock forward and backward and come all the way up. You can roll over to one side and come up. 
Come to lengthen through the legs. Lift the heart up, finding staff pose, dandasana. Hands beside you, heels away, toes back. Heart reaching forward, ribs softening in. Hmm. Bring your hands beside you or behind you. Choose Purvottanasana or tabletop. So tabletop would be feet to the ground, reverse tabletop, lifting the hips, letting the head relax just enough to open the throat, or legs long, pressing into the hands, coming to kind of a reverse incline plank. So find an openness across the chest and the throat, whichever you choose. So use the arms to press down and wrap the shoulders back. Inhaling here. Exhaling here. One more time. Reach the hips up or the toes to the ground. Exhale your bottom down. Hands to thighs, roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Feet to the ground. Bend your knees over to your right. I should do it the other way. And then spin to take a kind of mermaid twist. You can twist a little, heart lifted, fingertips on the ground. You can twist all the way around to the back of the mat. What does your body want to do today? So knees and thighs on the ground. See if you can bring more of that right hip to the ground and twist. Of course it's okay, but lifts a bit. Inhale like this. Exhale, unwind. Come back to center. Knees side to side. And then knees to the left. Walk around to a gentle mermaid twist or coming all the way down behind you. Relaxing that left hip towards the ground, whether it is on the ground, is dependent on your bones and your experience today. Inhaling like this. Exhale, sigh. Climb back to center. Reach the heels away. Few more breaths in Dandasana. Feeling the ability you have to reach your heels away and still sit firmly down. Your ability to reach through your hands and relax your shoulders down. So much stress during these days. So much worry. So many things. Feel your ability to both be active and come home to your core. To press down and relax the shoulders. To reach through the heels and ground through the sitting bones. Feeling the breath rise as you breathe in. And fall gently away as you exhale. Feel the belly expand on the inhale. Pull back so wisely on the exhale. Feel the back body breathe, expanding in all three directions, and soften in as you exhale. Bend your knees, bring your hands behind you, make your way down into your Shavasana. If it's possible, and if it works in your body, if you enjoy it, I love the idea of making a little bit of a cradle for the head in Shavasana. So that's something that you could do by bringing your head down on the end of a blanket and then just bringing the corners up to touch your shoulders. Some people might fold the outer edge, the other edge of the blanket down and in. Some people might lift the head up because the blanket coming forward might be too much of a curl underneath the low back. Can there be something that lets the skull, the head, feel cradled. Can being held by a blanket or a pillow allow the thinking mind to rest back into the head? Legs long, knees soft or knees bent, arms away from the body, but still connected. So arms only about 12 or 18 inches away. So the shoulders can still soften down. Drawing a long, slow breath in through your nose when you arrive. Exhale to sigh. Martha Beck wrote these words. 
we are always in transition. Accept the process of metamorphosis. At times you may feel that it is the end of the world. Just remember what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, a master calls a butterfly. When we move into an acceptance of the process of life, we allow ourselves the opportunity to rest in the freedom from suffering. And let the earth hold you with gravity. Cover up or spread out, or maybe both. Allow the tongue to rest from the root to the tip. Notice if thoughts and feelings come to draw you away from this moment. Allow. Allow yourself to hear and feel and think everything. And then return to your head relaxed on the ground. Your hips held by the earth. Your toes opportunity to relax.
Mm -hmm. Begin to deepen your breath now. And bring your hands to your belly to feel your breath expand and soften. Maybe, maybe make small movements in the body to reconnect. As you're ready, start to bend your knees, draw them in, give yourself a hug. Kind of roll over on your right side. Thank yourself for coming to your mat, practicing yoga today. And as you're ready, draw yourself up to come to sit. Hands together in front of your heart, lift your heart and bow your head. All the teachings that we have received through the ages about breath and yoga, they are not here, in my opinion, because life is so easy. They are here because change and being in process is really challenging. Notice if you feel more connected to your strength and your wisdom and your kindness after practice. And know that this practice is always here for you in full classes together, in small moments by yourself and with others at home. Stay connected to your charms. Stay connected to the strength and wisdom and kindness that is so very much within each of you. Let's close the class by joining our voices to chant hum or listen to the sound of OM once, and then close fully by moving into the rest of our day with the chant of Shanti, peace, three times together. Shoulders down, face soft, let's inhale here. Shanti, Shanti. Shanti Lift your face, bring the thumbs to the space between your eyebrows, soften your jaw, relax your shoulders, bow forward to you, seal in your practice. Loka Samasta, Sukhi no Pabantu, may all beings everywhere be happy and free. Namaste, my friends. Unmute, say goodbye, run off to the rest of your day, whatever is most appropriate for you right here and right now.